reliability, dependability, uh, strength. These are things that do not describe Moog wheel hubs. So, put the truck back together last year, noticed a loud hum from my driver's side, determined it was most likely wheel hubs. And seeing as I've already had two Moog hub failures already, with everything torqued down properly, and they still failed, it's time to just be done with it, put in something decent. Today we're gonna install kryptonite wheel hubs under my Duramax here. So this will be kind of an instructional video to help you guys out uh, in case you ever feel like tackling this job yourself. But wheel hubs, if you run big meaty tires, wide wheels, things like that, this is something you're gonna eventually be doing and it can cost you a ton of money if you bring it to a shop. So why not learn to do it at home? All you need is some tools and some know-how. So I'm gonna give you the know-how. Ain't buying your tools for you, that's on you. But let's go ahead and get started here. You've gotta take the hub cap off, which is easy peasy on these aftermarket wheels. If you drive a stock truck, you have uh, a really annoying hubcap with eight or six uh, fake bolts that bolt onto the actual lug nuts. They suck. Those hubcaps fall off all the time. Not good, not fun. So that's done and you gotta take the wheel off, of course, so let me jack it up a little bit. Now the wheel can come off. Now if you drive a stock truck, this isn't gonna be as easy of a job. With the lift here, I could have a ton of extra room to work in here. So, it's a little bit easier for me. Just try to follow along as best you can. First thing I prefer doing is disconnecting it here at the steering knuckle so then you can steer it freely and you don't really have to worry about much. For me, it's a 21. I got Fabtech HD tie rods. There you go. Whenever I have to hammer on something, I always leave it on a thread just so I can hammer it. A lot of people hammer, hammer here on the knuckle, but I mean, one, two hits, just get rid of it. So we'll take this off. And this can hang freely there. What we'll need to do next is disconnect the speed sensor line relatively easy. You just gotta clip your zip ties and then unplug it at the connector. I'd show you the unplugging, but I have a giant reservoir in the way, so can't really see it. Okay, now that is disconnected. Turn the calipers off to remove the rotor.
Next we have this massive nut here. We'll have to take this off. I don't know the inch size on it, but I've used a 36 and this has usually worked for me. There you have it. That's off. And then all we need to do is take out the four bolts on the back, which may be a little difficult to get to at the moment. This is a extremely hard angle to fil film from, but size 15. should be able to give you a better angle from the front. Hopefully. One down here. And one up there. This tie rod is in the way. whole hub should just pop on off. So here we have our kryptonite wheel hub. Lifetime warranty. They don't care what size tire you're running. And they give you the torque specs right here. That's really nice. Great, great presentation inside the product because if you buy something off AutoZone, they don't give you any of that. It's just a box with a part. So here we go, we have the kryptonite wheel hub. Nice and shiny. Cut these little wheel speed sensor zip ties. And now we're ready to Put it back together. So, I leave everything like this out in the open. Um, no need to take the CV axle out. You may have to in like a stock, in a stock truck, you might have to. So, that's just there for reference. And now we just got to put on the heat shield, which this heat shield should be thrown away, honestly. And take the CV axle and kind of make it, make it like that. So now the hub is threaded onto the CV axle. We just need to push her on there. Now is the good time to thread the speed sensor up and around, like so. And there, there you go. That's really it. That's really all this takes. So all you have to do is just push the new bearing on, and then thread these on, and then uh, 
torque to the right torque spec. So this is gonna be 133 foot-pounds. So let's try to do that. So this is set to 133 foot-pounds. Okay, that's good. This AutoZone one just doesn't doesn't work. So glad to know that the Harbor Freight one works good. Okay, while we're here, we'll zip tie speed sensor. Okay. This torque wrench is very nice. I'm actually very impressed with this Harbor Freight torque wrench. It does really, really well. Now we just gotta put the rotor on and then the caliper. Last but not least, the CV nut. And lastly, to torque this to 177. This is the most important part. If you over torque this, You'll cook up your bearing and it will break and you'll ka-chow. If you don't do it enough, your unit bearing will separate and you'll break and you'll ka-chow. So this is something you need to get right. Don't ask me how I know. Now to just hammer on this stupid thing.
put the tie rod back on. And we are all done. So I thank you for watching the install of this kryptonite wheel hub. I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side and get it done quicker because I'm not gonna make a video on it because it's the same thing. So if you enjoyed this install video and if it helped you, please let me know in the comments. If you like this video and wanna see more videos similar to this one, uh, like and subscribe the whole shebang, you know, and uh, I'll do what I can.